Welcome back to the RVDSA channel. Glad to get some videos back out again, getting out in the garage, working on the plane. I'll try and keep the intro short, basically just working on preparing the main spar, that first main section of the wing instructions for the RV8. Enjoy. Finally time to get started on the wings. Got the left main spar here. I'm gonna build both wings at the same time. So basically I'll do each step on the left wing and then I'll do the step on the right wing. Just easier to kind of keep track of the step that I'm at rather than trying to start all over after the wing is complete. First step is just identifying the spar itself, left and right. They have these uh, serialized, so they're labeled left and right. So that makes that aspect easier. Essentially the flange is gonna be the rear of the spar. So this is the left wing. So this is actually the bottom that's facing up. And the top is facing the tabletop. You can see that I've labeled those where the tops and bottoms front and rear is. The other thing you'll notice on the back, this is something I saw another builder do. I don't know that it's really necessary, but essentially where all of these lightning holes were cut out in this doubler, I just taped up those seams so that as I'm doing all this countersinking, et cetera, into the flange, I don't get all those metal shavings into those fine crevices that are gonna be real difficult to try and vacuum out. Like I say, I don't really think it's necessary, but it took maybe 30 minutes to do both spars and tapes relatively cheap rather than trying to vacuum those out or risk having a shaving get stuck in there and potentially eating away at the anodizing and maybe causing some corrosion down the road. But next step, essentially, is gonna be installing the nut plates for the fuel tank. On the top here, you've got 30 nut plates. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the bottom bit. No, I did, I rotated it around. This is why you label it. So on the top here, you've got 30 nut plates that are gonna mount the fuel tank to. And so each of these nut plates are gonna get installed first. Then what they'll have you do is after you've installed the nut plate, that nut plate is gonna provide the backer for your countersink drive to countersink for the number eight screw for the tank. Now on the bottom, you also have 12 additional nut plates that you're installing for the three inspection covers. So I'll do those as well. While I'm working in the background, let's talk a little bit about countersinking. If you're struggling with having some chatter on your countersinks, there are two common problems that could be causing it. First, if the material you're countersinking isn't thick enough, the pilot on the cutter will no longer have anything to keep it steady. And the cutter effectively becomes a router. It's going to allow the cutter to walk, causing chatter and elongated holes. To prevent this, you need to place an additional skin below the material of appropriate thickness to continue to guide the pilot. Like this piece of scrap I made to place beneath the wing flanges while countersinking the number 40 holes for the nut plates. The second common issue with countersinking that I just recently learned was that you want a very low speed for the countersinking operation. If you're getting a lot of chatter but have a properly guided pilot, then likely your drill speed is too high. I had noticed previously on the empennage I would have an inconsistency sometimes in the countersinks. Sometimes the countersinks came out great, other times they were very chattered. After talking to a sheet metal guy, thanks Mark, I realized my dumb luck was based on which drill I was putting the countersink into. I have one drill that's 6,000 RPM and the other is 3,200 RPM. Now realistically even the 3200 RPM is a little high and you want to uh, feather the throttle or even better just use an electric power drill that simply spins at a slower speed and your chatter problem should hopefully disappear. Now another thing with the countersinking, I would strongly recommend even if you don't have the space to build both wings at the same time, at this stage in the game I would basically bounce between both wings uh, just because setting up those countersinks if you haven't set them up properly it, it's going to be beneficial to you to just have them all set up at one time in my case I've, I've got three countersink cages which helps so I keep a dedicated number 30 a dedicated number 40 and then I have the third one that I use for whatever else so in this case I'll use it for both the number eight and the number six screws but if you did nothing else, especially if you only have one countersink cage, just make sure on both wings, you've got 144 holes here essentially that you're countersinking out. Do it on both wings so that all those are set. When you get the number eight set, do it on both spars and same with the number six screws. Okay, now that we've got all of the nut plates installed along the spar, we're gonna go ahead and countersink the holes for the number eight screws. So this is about the best angle I can get you, I think. 
see if I can get a little bit closer there. And basically just using a power drill, nice and slow. We we'll get a little loud here. Now part of what you'll notice, I stopped a little early just so that I can try and show you here. The hole will look a little bit chattered early on. That's normal. It's just waiting for that countersink to get fully seated in that nut plate, the uh, countersink pilot. As it gets further seated, it'll clean up real nice. And if I just grab my little template there, that's nice and flat. Now if I move this a little closer, now you can see that that hole is nice and clean, I'm trying to get good lighting. No chatter. Now that you've seen it up close, just doing the same thing for the other remaining tank attach holes. I've got 30 of them on the top drilling them to number eight, uh, drilling it for a number eight screw to attach the fuel tank to. So this angle, you can just kind of see me working my way down the line. You'll see here as I get towards the end that I kind of work my way back. There was a couple of them that I just didn't feel like I quite got uh, the countersink pressed all the way down and, and got it fully cut. So I just kind of worked back on those uh, two or three holes uh, that didn't feel like they were quite deep enough. Now this process took a little bit longer than I had anticipated. I really thought that, you know, on, on paper it's, oh yeah, you're just countersinking these, you know, holes and thinking it's going to be a, a quick hour or two hour job. And I, I think total between the two spars, I put in about three and a half hours or so. Uh, this is just kind of a walk down the line, seeing all the countersunk holes there. No chatter on any of them. They came out really well. Uh, like I was saying that it just, Took some time, but it, again, it's worth taking the time that it takes to, to do it right, and especially something this critical, you're drilling into the spar, you certainly don't want to mess this up and have to reorder a spar. I don't know what that costs and uh, what all that entails, but it's worth taking the time and, and just uh, making sure you get it right. And you can see that every so often I'm also checking the hole and making sure the depth is correct. Uh, I've got basically a screw that I had cut down short so that I could screw it into the nut plate and make sure that it was going to make the proper depth and then I also have a dimpled scrap 032 sheet of aluminum that I would also nestle on there just to make sure that it was sitting flush with the surface of the spar. So again 30 on the bottom here just giving you a different perspective as I work my way down the line. After I finish these 30 then I've also got to drill the 12 countersunk uh, number 6 screw holes for the inspection covers also on the bottom of the spar. Uh, that part I didn't actually film, I don't believe. Um, just forgot to turn the camera on. Now that I've got all the holes countersunk on the spar for the tank attach holes and the inspection covers, I'm just working on the tie down bar. So the plans have you put a hole on the top corner, uh, top right corner of the tie down bar. That's gonna be your first 
match hole to line it up properly with the spar. You're going to place the tie down bar on the forward portion of the spar. Make sure you got your top and your bottom properly oriented. And then once you've got it lined up, uh, you can see I've also thrown these other alignment marks on here just to give me reference uh, with the holes here. Uh, make sure that they're roughly aligned. Then once you get this placed onto the spar, you should be able to see those alignment holes through the hole just to make sure that, you know, kind of a backup that you've got it properly adjusted. Now I'm also going to throw a square on there just to make sure again that it's perfectly square with the spar as it's supposed to be. So you can see here, I'm going to click it in and then I'm going to uh, clamp it down and it's kind of tough to see right here uh, with the holes that they line up but I'll go ahead and throw a little picture up here that'll show you a little better of what the uh, alignment holes look like and one of them you can see the measurement was just a little bit off uh, but again it gave me a ballpark let me know that it was right once I had it squared I knew that I was where I needed to be so now I'm just back drilling all of those holes and uh, I did not put the spacers in initially for back drilling the holes I went ahead and back drilled just the tie down bar and then what I did is I clamped just the spacer to the spar and I back drilled that as well. I felt that was easier than trying to clamp the spacer through the tie down bar into the uh, all at once. Once it's all said and done, you can see I've got the spacers drilled for the number three bolts, AN three bolts, as well as the nut plate rivet holes drilled and countersunk. I also drilled the lightning hole through the center of the spacer and match drilled the nut plate holes into the tie down bar itself as well. Thanks for watching. All that's left is for me to prime the tie down bar and the spacers and then attach those to the aileron belt crank hinges on the back side of the spar. Next step is going to be working on the rear spar, so stay tuned. I'll get that out hopefully within the next week or so. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, like, subscribe, and feel free to comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for me.